Get ready, because Scott's is taking over Daylight Saving Time. It's such a big event that we're calling it Daylong Saving Time. And now it's got real savings. In fact, it's the biggest deals of the year. Audacious? Absolutely. So don't wait. Stock up early and you'll be able to save up to $20 on Scott's Triple Action and Easy Seed products today at the Home Depot and Lowe's. Offers available March 9th through 22nd at select U.S. stores. While supplies last, selection varies by location. See store for exact offers. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to the Behind the Bits podcast. This is episode six with Charlie Hester. She's from Danville, Illinois, and is known as a dirty ray of sunshine, a musical comic that is doing great things and is a great, great interview. I hope you enjoy. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Behind the Bits podcast. Uh, This is Scott Curtis, still the host. Uh, You're stuck with me, and I've got uh, Charlie Hester here with me. How are you doing, Charlie? I'm doing excellent. How are you, Scott? I'm great. I'm fantastic. I'm glad we got to connect. Uh, I I have seen you at uh, the Drop Comedy Club here in South Bend a couple times. Um, I think one time as a headliner, and I think you dropped into an open mic one time when I was there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, I think you're, um, I think you're cool. You'll be the first uh, musical comic that I've had on. Uh, so uh, I think, I think that's cool. One, one thing that I've always been jealous of is of people who can play an instrument and sing because neither one of those work for me. So uh, I, I think. Right. Well, I mean, in fairness, the playing an instrument part really doesn't work for me either. <laughs> I just am cute and I play it off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're, you're you're hitting actual chords, so you know that helps. Mostly, yes. Mostly. <laughs> so I I, I, I wanted. Don't get too picky at this. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I wanted to ask um, when in your uh, when in your lifetime you became interested in comedy and when it actually started for you. Oh wow! Um, I think when I was in high school, I gravitated a lot towards. Um, that was right about the time that Comedy Central started becoming a thing, um, and stand up really became very accessible mm-hmm. as a you know a, as something that everybody gets to enjoy. You don't just have to go to a club. Um, my parents actually they always like when we would go to the to the VHS movie rental store, um, we they would um, get comedy often. And so I grew up watching Carrot Top and Gallagher mm-hmm. and uh, Girl Carver. And, but, you know, I, we had all of the, like, my parents always, um, they would make me go to bed, but then I would be sitting at the bottom of the steps and I would listen. And I was listening to them laugh and forgetting about how hard life is. Mm-hmm. And so that that was something that really stuck with me growing up was that my like my parents there was just there was just lightness to them after they had had a really good laugh. Mm-hmm. And so that was that was the principle that I sort of carried into my own life um in becoming an adult. And so and now I mean here we are this is this is what I do. Mm-hmm. So well, that, that's really cool. Yeah. So, at you know, at what age did you do like your first comedy? You know, did you do an open mic? What, what did you do? Um, let's see. I'm 42 now, and I did it eight years ago. So okay. I was what, 30, 34. Okay, cool. Is that right? Yeah. Does the math check out all that? Yeah, I, that I, works. I'm, I'm that works. Comic. I don't do math. <laughs> yeah. So you started you started a little later than some people. Some people are in their teens and early 20s. Yeah. No, I did. Um, I started much later than a lot of people, but that also, um, I, I think it worked to my advantage because I very quickly saw that it was something not only that I wanted to do, but it was something that I wanted to be truly successful at. And so I was able to apply sort of that, that early adulthood wisdom that I had gained so far and 
was able to apply it to how I pursued comedy. And so I've been able to sort of, I don't want to say like advance very quickly, but I mean, but I'm, I'm doing okay. Like I, I am doing quite a few shows and, you know, I still have a lot of goals that I need to hit, but you know, my, I'm proud of what I've been able to accomplish in my career so far. Well, that's great. And, and you should be, um, what it's funny uh, starting later in life. So I started stand up when I was 50 and I'm 55 now. And it's, it's, okay. it's more of a hobby for me. I don't, I don't plan on, um, taking it anywhere. Yeah. So I just, I just have fun okay. at it. But I do know that as an adult, because I see, I see a lot of the, you know, the kids that hang out at the drop and stuff like that, that are just getting started mm-hmm. as an adult. Um, you can be a little bit more um, uh, self-critical um, without uh, putting yourself completely down and and knowing that if a joke doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. Just get rid of it and move on and stuff like that. So it does make yeah. it a little bit easier. I mean, I think so. I, I love the enthusiasm that I see in uh, all of the younger people, which is pretty much most of them, whenever I go into a club, usually I'm one of the older people that are there right. um, as far as like performers. But um, I mean, I love their enthusiasm. I love their passion for it. I love their excitement. Um, but I don't know if that's because I'm more because I'm older or because I've been doing this longer. And maybe, I, I don't know, maybe like the hope has been dashed out of me and I'm just <laughs> jaded now. Like, but it's really, but it's really refreshing to me to see who are, you know, so excited about it, you know, and they just believe that every possibility is a possibility. Right. And, you know, I, so I, do, I do love that, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, like, I'm the kind of person who I, I show up early and on time, and I, I treat it very professionally. Mm-hmm. And I think that there, you know, there are a lot of younger comics who, you know, they don't treat it professionally for a while. Right. And I think that that's one of the reasons why they sort of get stuck in that, you know, they do open mics and showcases, but they don't really understand how to make a career out of it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, the the thing about the enthusiasm, though, is um, people like us, uh, we can we can feed off that enthusiasm because we've we've been around for a while. And, and I I just use it. It's kind of my energy, especially especially when I see somebody who is like breaking out and just, you know, they're going from they're going from being an open micer and kind of funny to actually having a good 10 minutes and uh, a good 20 minutes and stuff like that. So that enthusiasm is cool for me. And that's, you know, that's what that's what keeps me young, except for my looks, you know. Right. Yeah. No, I I, I did a whole plastic surgery. Uh, juvederm and Botox kind of thing. So that's how I keep my youth on stage. Uh-huh. But on stage, definitely. Um, yeah, I think that there's, I think that there's a lot to be said to that and sort of, you know, pulling, pulling that enthusiasm and figuring out how to apply it to um, a more mature approach. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's one place where I've managed to strike a really nice balance because you know, I try very hard to be very positive and I'm always really optimistic, but also this is a job for me right. and everybody has bad days at work and, you know, everybody hates their job sometimes, but it's the kind of job that you just, I mean, you just keep coming back to it. And so, you know, so that enthusiasm of the young pups, it really is important because it, it keeps keeps me excited and it keeps me searching for, you know, who do I want to travel with me or, you know, who who can I really help support or who do I see that's struggling that's really good, but they just need a little encouragement. And, you know, not that I have any good guidance to give them. I'm a hot shit mess. <laughs> but, you know, but sometimes like just, just hearing like, hey, I thought that that was really funny. This is, you know, this joke it really struck a chord with me. It's really well written, you know, and it's, I, I try and treat people the way that I would like to be treated myself. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I don't know. New, I, I have a love hate relationship with new comics mm-hmm. now that I've been doing this a little while. Right. Right. So, 
that's one thing that I think um, uh, the the younger comics they and I, I I'm not I'm not being one of those. Uh, I hate millennials people or anything like that. I love millennials. I think they're the only one that are going to save the world from my generation. So, you know, I, I think that, I think that they're the best, but I remember myself when I was, you know, in my late teens and early twenties, you're just so self-absorbed that you don't see what's going on around you. And when, Mm -hmm. and somebody like you or I, when we see something that's really good, I do the same thing. When somebody has a a good bit or they really pull something off, I, I immediately go up and tell them, Hey, you know, you've got gold there and you need to keep working on that. Yeah. And, and yeah, when they hear that, you know, it just, you you can tell that they lighten everything. Everything is a little bit better for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. And I think that, it's a lot of those moments that matter in comedy. I mean, they matter more than having a good set every freaking time. Because honestly, I've learned way more about comedy by having bad sets than I ever have having good sets. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, but on the nights of those bad sets, you know, hearing somebody say, yeah, you know, maybe this part wasn't so great, but this part, this part was you nailed it. Or, Know, that really resonated with me and yeah it's moments like that that just keep you going right so. and it's it's so funny in in sets and bits that if if you you can take a, a bit that totally bombs and change two words and all of a sudden it's it's the best thing ever so that's yeah uh, you know I, I had actually i had an experience with that um i have there's a song that i sing that called sometimes I fart during sex it's uh-huh. sort of like my crown jewel yeah and I've been saying it for probably oh I don't know five six months and I just like this song just can't get any better and a buddy of mine Keith Bergman he came up to me after a show one night and he was like you know he's like I'm not telling you how to write your song he said but if you change one word I bet you get a bigger laugh and I'm like really what's that and so he told me, and the next time I tried it, and I recorded it, and then I sent him the recording, and I was just like, motherfucker, you were right. <laughs> and they, you know, I mean, but it's, you have to be open to a little bit of guidance, but at the same time, not everybody is going to give you good advice. And so there's, there's this really interesting um, level of hope. How much do you listen to people and how much do you ignore them and do what makes you happy? Right. And that's, that's something that you can only learn with time and experience on mm-hmm. date. And, um, yeah, cause I've had a lot of people give some real shitty advice. And then there are people like Stuart Huff who have revolutionized how I approach comedy and even how I live as a human. So, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, Comedy is so weird, Scott. It's so fucking weird. <laughs> Com- comedy is definitely more like calculus than it is uh, a simple math, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. It and, definitely is. And there's just a lot of equations, and you don't realize that you're trying to solve them until you're on stage, and you're like, oh, crap, I better figure this out right now. Right, right. And you're, you're kind of in the... Um, uh, echelon of Stuart Huff as far as other comics are concerned too when I mention your name to other comics they're like oh she's just the greatest she she helped me no, do this this don't. and this yeah yeah they do no, people I like you no you're just building up my self esteem I'm already doing your podcast guys you don't have yeah. to butter me up anymore. no no really people <laughs> like you I can't help it <laughs> oh well that that matters a lot and that yeah. really a lot because it I, there are, you know, it's just like in real life. I mean, there, there are people who are just absolute crap, and then there are people who, you know, they're pretty great. And mm-hmm. but then there, there are the people who, when they walk in the room, you can see the light just shining off of them. Yep. And that, that truly is what I aspire to be. And I'm not going to say that I am, but that, I mean, that's what I truly work towards. That, right. And a lot of that has been Stuart Huff's influence. Mm-hmm. With how with how I want to be perceived in comedy, because I would love to, you know, yeah, wow, you, yeah, you got me, 
and not knowing what to say here, Scott. Yeah. Holy crap. Well, you know, having having the respect of your peers in comedy is like one of those things that is the the best thing ever because there's a lot of there's a lot of great comics out there. There's a lot of people that make people laugh and um they just they, they don't have the respect of their peers, but there's a lot of them out there that just people love. I mean, I I I'll bring up like Gary Shandling. You know, um you know, he was like a guru and um he you know he helps so many people uh with their with their acts with uh with uh getting on tv all kinds of stuff and 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 he did it very selflessly right yeah and you know the the thing that i try and remember is that i have to accept generousness and help from others now until i get to the point where i can be the generous person and pay all of that forward. Right, right. And, um, you know, and so that that truly is, like, I don't want to be successful in comedy because I need to be famous. I want to be there because I want to have that kind of influence in the world so that I can help others. Right. And I can help them achieve their own best life, which I know that that's completely overplayed <laughs> and everybody, you know. But, but truly, like, I... You know, I know how happy comedy makes me, and I know that with every opportunity, I am so, I'm so grateful, and I'm so thankful for the people who believed in me and gave me that shot. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I want to be that person for others. And so, you know, right now I can only do small things like, you know, hey, come feature for me, or you know, let do a run or whatever. But yeah, hopefully I'll get there. Right. Right. We'll we'll see how this train is chugging along. Right. So, um, tell me about the first time you headlined. What was that like? Um, it was actually at the drop. All right. Yeah, that was my very first headlining weekend. Um, it was so funny because my friend Heather Awardwick, now one of the owners, um, she saw me perform. She saw me do, um, I was at the, it's the whiskey place that's oh, in South Bend. Yeah, um, Indiana Whiskey? Yes, Indiana Whiskey. Yeah. She saw me perform there and she was like, you have to come to the drop. And she had just started hanging out there. And uh, anyway, so she got a hold of the owner at the time. And she was like, yeah, you need to book Charlie. And so he did on that condition. And he's like, all right, just, you know, you let me know um, what we can work for you. And I'm like, so I gave him dates. And then I'm like, holy crap, I'm headlining for the first time. <laughs> and then I said, oh, I said, by the way, who is it? And he goes, um, whoever you want. And I was like, oh, oh, crap. I didn't know this was part of the process. And I just <laughs> them because I did. But it felt so stupid because I was so excited about headlining. I completely overlooked that, like, now I have to bring somebody with me who's going to set me up. And so that really added an additional level of pressure mm-hmm. for me. And, but it worked. And um, it was that weekend was rough, but I did it. Mm-hmm. And um, so that was my first like club headlining. Like I'd headlined like showcases and stuff like that before, um, and I'd done an hour a few times, but not not nearly enough to be as comfortable with it as what I am now. Mm-hmm. But there again, I mean, it's one of those things where you have to do it in order to get comfortable with it. You know, normal things don't feel normal until you've done them enough. And now, you know, when people are like, oh, you get 20 minutes. I'm like, oh, it's not all, <laughs> like, you know. It's, <laughs> and it's, it's just because I, it, and it's not because I am trying to be selfish and, you know, want that time for me, but like, but I kind of do because I have fun. I love this job. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's. So I have a job that's trying to lick my face right now. So, if <laughs> you're slurping on the phone, um, that's, that's my little boy traveler. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, a six-month-old golden retriever, and he's a total pain in my ass. Oh man, they they've yeah. got all the energy. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, and and I have been gone for the last three days, and so he has not seen me, and so he is now sitting on top of me as I'm laying on my bed and staring. He's like literally three inches away from my face, mm-hmm. just staring at me. <laughs> like, hi, I love you. Are you done yet? Yeah. Are you done yet, Mom? <laughs> yeah. That's it's great. Not like I'm not, I haven't been petting him this entire 
conversation so far. Uh huh. I wanted to ask you something that I haven't asked anybody yet um, because Ooh. I haven't seen a website as nice as yours for any comic that I've talked to yet. So obviously to 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 get yourself out there and make a good impression, having a good website definitely helps. And yours is like uh, like put together by Hollywood or something. You know, all your all oh. your. You did? I did. I worked really hard on that website. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, it's 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 yeah, definitely it's definitely stunning. I mean, the colors you picked and all that kind of stuff. I work in the tech world and I just I just pulled that up and I'm like, "Yep, I know I know whose website this is and I know what she's all about. I can click around very easily and it's uh yeah. it's the it's only very thing nice." That's not- right now is my schedule and I've been relaxed about that but also we've had some family stuff going on um and my we've been, my son has been going through a transition with his mental health mm-hmm. and so I haven't really been booking all that much recently but things are starting to pick back up now as, mm-hmm. as he's getting healthier and so yeah so that I, I will have it updated by the time this uh this podcast airs yeah <laughs> just please tell me when <laughs> <laughs> you've you've got a couple weeks, so um, I'm 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 banking mm-hmm. episodes right now. So if I have a down week, I can uh, put one up. So uh, perfect. But, yeah, perfect. yeah. So you you've got a little time. No, it's it's a great okay. uh, it's a great website. So how did you come up with the uh, tagline of "Dirty Ray of Sunshine"? <laughs> Somebody actually called me that. Oh, um, cool. They yeah. Um, I had made a comment. Well. Justin Tuttle, who is a comic that's in Champaign, Urbana, um, he was on a show with me one time, and he got up after I had done my set, and he was like, oh, you can't find that trashy Trisha Yearwood. <laughs> and I thought it was so funny. It just, that just like, resonated with me. Because my music is a little country, because country only requires three chords. Yeah. <laughs> and so my music tends to lend itself to that sort of feel. But... Um, when I, I was talking to another comic and I honestly, I don't remember who it was or I would give them all the credit in the world. But um, I was talking to another comic after a show about it and it wasn't even a comic I knew very well. And I said, yeah, I've been called Trashy Trisha Yearwood. And um, this guy said, nah, you're really more like a dirty ray of sunshine. <laughs> and it like immediately in my head, like the wheels started turning and it was shortly after that that I started wearing only yellow on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm he- if I'm headlining or featuring, I always wear a yellow dress. And um, it's in a lot of places too. Like I just I do, um, but that's for a couple reasons. First off, the color yellow makes me happy, and it makes people happy when they see it. Mm-hmm. And you don't see many blonde women wearing a bright yellow dress. Right. Um, second of all, it encourages to be able to find me after a show and talk to me. Mm -hmm. Um, That is something that is really important with me um, is connecting with an audience because I'm not, I mean, I'm there to network with comedians as well, Mm -hmm. but my goal is to constantly increase my fan base and to build fans for life. And so um, my visibility needs to be such that people in a crowded room they can spot me easily and make their way to me. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't blend in. And that is very specific. And, um, yeah, I mean, in the fact is I have a trash hormone and yet <laughs> I'm doing the great girl drive and like raising products for women's shelters. So yeah, I really am like, I, I'm a sweet ray of sunshine, but also like dirty as hell. And my mom won't watch me do comedy. Uh-huh. <laughs> it fits. It yeah. Just fit all around. yeah, it's it's absolutely perfect. Um, what you say about um about uh, pe- people coming up and talking to you after a show, it is so true, and it's 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 very basic sales is what it is. If, is if you make yeah. somebody feel good when when they leave your show, they're going to go out and tell ten people, "I've got you've got to go see Charlie Hester." And then yep. you just build on that and you make more fans and more fans. It's just, it's very yeah. simple. Be nice and uh, be available for them. And it works every time. 
Yeah. And I think that one, one thing that a lot of new comics, like it, yes, stage time is very fun. It's amazing to get laughs. But I think that people underestimate the amount of marketing that goes into what I do. And constantly, like when I'm getting ready to post something on Facebook, even just on my personal page, I'm like, okay, is this on brand for me? You know, is this, is this encouraging? Is this relatable? Is it funny? Or is it, you know, about my life in general, but still with positive spin? Right. I don't think that I, I really try hard not to ever post something that is just inherently, unredeemably negative because that's not my brand and that's not who I am. I'm not a negative person. Right. I deal with some shit, but, you know, I always try and find the silver lining in everything and learn the lessons that I can. And so, yeah, when, so when it comes to comedy, the marketing aspect is a whole mind fuck for people, especially if they don't have any experience with like advertising or sales or anything like that. It is really, really tricky and yeah. intimidating. And so I'm fortunate enough, I used to sell advertising uh, for newspapers and radio stations. Uh, yeah. And um, I've sold like pretty much a sold appliances, and I've done everything but sell cars and houses. Um, and so, you know, you, just, you have to learn how to meet people right where they are, and in five minutes, make an impression. Right, right. And, you know, that's, it. it is a daunting task until you get the knack of it, and then it's fun. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and it's, would, would you consider yourself an extrovert or an introvert? Oh, okay. Um, professional Charlie, Charlie who is out at shows, who is available to talk to people after the crowds, mm -hmm. is very extroverted. Yeah. Um, Charlie who gets home and once the bra comes off, extremely introverted. Mm -hmm. um, like when I go on road trips, the only time that I like talk, talk to people is when I'm on stage. Yeah. And I can not talk to people for three days and I am so fine. <laughs> and I feel recharged. Like I will go to Walmart in the middle of the night because I don't want to deal with people. Oh, I man. am introverted. Yeah. So we're but like right, but right now, you know, like what we're doing right now, this is one of those things where, you know, I have, I, I can't be like that. And so, yeah, but this is work. And so at work, I'm extroverted because right. that's what I got to do to get the job done. And I said, no, seriously, it, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say one of the reasons that, like one of the for me reasons that I would really love to become like a big, huge, successful comedian that is like recognized everywhere is so I can go to Walmart in like my pajamas and messy hair and no bra and people are just going to think that I'm there incognito yeah. because I'm lazy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm ready for that. Like that that's is great. The part of it that is for me. Yeah, that's great. At what I was what I was going to say is uh, I think most of the comics that I know and I talk to that we're all introverts, but we we take that energy that uh, you have to build up and do the mm -hmm. do the comedy and talk to the people and do the stupid social media stuff. It's just uh, it, it it's it takes an enormous amount of energy to do that type of stuff for an introvert. But. I guess we just yep. do it. And and yep. and that's what you have to do to to get anywhere. Yeah. Well and thank but thank goodness for things like social media venues like Facebook where I can still be connected but I don't have to say shit to people in right. real life. Right. And so, you know, there are days when literally on Facebook that's the only that's truly the only interaction that I'm getting. I mean, besides like with the people who live in my house, like my family. But yeah, I don't, I don't actively speak out. Like I don't, I'm not like, Hey, let's go out for coffee. I'm yeah. not that girl. Yeah. I am. Um, we will go for three months and not talk. And then you will force me out of my house and then I will see you and we'll catch up. And then it'll be another three months. Like yeah. that's just how I operate. Yeah. But yeah. thankfully I have a nice group of friends who they all understand that. Mm -hmm. so. And that's, it, it's, um, I'm, I, I'm so much like you because, you know, for, first off, I'm an anomaly. You in sing a my, song about squirting too? In, no. <laughs> no, I did I did do a song about ranch dressing, though. No, no, I didn't. Oh, 
Well, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fair. That tracks. All right. No, but I, after, I'm kind of an anomaly, so all the young people kind of just want to hang out and find out what I'm all about. But when I'm done, I'm done. I've, I've, I've got a wife that... Everyone loves TV Dad. On the next TV Dad, presented by Progressive, TV Dad gets us through heartache. <laughs> Chin up, sport. Oh, hey, TV Dad. You know what heals all wounds? Time? <laughs> no, it's remembering the drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds. But Jen still doesn't want to be with me. True. I actually saw her with your friend Brian earlier. Wait, what? <laughs> Listen to your TV Dad. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Uh, I've been with her for 37 years, and I just want to go home and go to bed. And <laughs> so... Yeah. so so very, it's uh, very rare, rarely that I do anything outside of what I'm supposed to do for any show that I'm Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, and that, but that's a double-edged sword, too. Right. Because there are a lot of times where it's not even necessarily your talent and your ability that is what makes you bookable. It is the connections that you make and the, um, you know, your the way that you interact with people when you're not on stage, like other comics mm-hmm. and, and people who book. And so you, yeah, you, I've accepted it as part of the job. And again, it's a job. So there are going to be parts of it that I don't like. And that's one of them. But like, I'll have to force myself to go out and hang at, you know, like if everybody's like, well, let's go out to a bar. Let's go sing karaoke. Like I have my <laughs> one karaoke song, <laughs> which is, that is one of my pieces of new advice I give to new com or like, advice I give to new comics is have one karaoke song in your back pocket that you can just wail on. Yeah. And then once you do your one song afterwards at the hang, then you're done. Yeah. And, you know, that, but it's little things like that, you know, that you, you really have to play those games in order to be successful. And again, I look at Stuart Huff. I've never seen Stuart Huff tell somebody, I don't have time to talk to you right now. I've never once seen him do that. Even when he is tired and dragging his heels. I mean, gosh, last time he was here for my house show, we stayed up until 4.30 in the morning talking. Mm. Like, so, you know, and I, that's just part of what we have to do right. as performers. And so you just, you just got to embrace it and just be okay with it. Yeah. It's funny. I went to see a comic, and I can't remember his name uh, off the top of my head up in Grand Rapids at Dr. Grin's, and uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Garrett Elzinga was a host, and Stu McAllister went up, and um, there was a couple. I love you. Yeah, and, and my, so what I normally do after a show is leave, and, you know, I, Mm -hmm. I think they're funny, and my wife's with me. She says, you should really talk to them because, you know, you might want to do something up here someday. And so I went and, mm-hmm. you know, I talked to them and uh, uh, made a connection and did the Facebook thing and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's one thing, you know, it's kind of small talk when you're when you're just there chatting. But when when comics actually talk about comedy, that's that's something different. It doesn't take it doesn't take as much energy to talk about real stuff that that matters to you. It's the small yeah. talk that kind of wears me out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I agree. Like, I don't want to talk about like the weather or I don't want to, you know, but you, you get me in on some comedy gossip that I won't repeat, but I will sure as fuck <laughs> listen to. Like, you know, that, that kind of thing. It gets me going. Um, for a while I had been, um, I had, Stop doing my house show for a while, and I just missed it because that was one of the things I realized I was missing. Because I live in an area where there are no other comics, like there's only one in town, and he's not going out all that much. Mm. And um, so it's like there's very few of us here, and um, so I but I missed it. I missed that having that camaraderie after the show and, you know, getting the skinny and, you know, listening to all the shit that people talk about, you know, mm-hmm. about other comics. It's, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's kind of like me watching uh, Real Housewives. Like, I don't watch that show, mm-hmm. but, like, I understand why people do because it's like their guilty pleasure and that's 
comedy gossip is kind of like that with me. Like, yeah. I'm just like, oh, oh, you know. He did what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, I'll never look at them the same way again. But yet I do. You know, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's hilarious because, yeah, the comics, we love the drama. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, they do. They, I, I've seen mm-hmm. a little bit of that myself. That's funny. Um, one of the yeah. things I wanted to ask you um, is, um, you, um, you know, life life gets real for all of us, um, and mm-hmm. and um, shit hits the fan and all that kind of stuff. Um, how are you able? And, and I just know that this has happened to you recently, and things are getting better and stuff like that. But um, and I don't want to go into detail, but uh, when when life is just so chaotic and things things are really down, how are you able to focus yourself and do a show? Oh, well, that that part is actually the easiest part um, because it it allows me to take my brain out of everything that I'm doing, and all I am focused on are the faces that I can see until the light, you know, until the lights make them so I can't see who's in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that part genuinely, that is, that is, is my escape. And mm-hmm. there have been times when I've been at my most broken. And, um, I, in fact, I remember I did a show at a barrel of laughs in, uh, outside of Dayton, Ohio, I think it's in Springboro. Mm-hmm. And it was like four days after we had had to put my dog down and my dog was like, my everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that dog. Yeah. And um, but that first moment, I was like, okay, I I am gonna give everything that I am to this audience, and that includes like all of that emotion that I'm feeling. But I'm gonna I'm gonna redirect it, and it's not gonna be sadness. It's gonna be excitement for them, and you know, compassion. And I'm truly going to transfer my energy to them. Um, but in a positive way. Mm. And so that's, that's really a lot of what I do. And yeah, there have been many times when there's been a show that's come along right when my, yeah, shit has hit the van. Mm. And, um, but those, sh- those shows have been the ones that, that have in fact saved me mm. uh, because I can get out of my own head. And right. I'm very optimistic. Like I want to believe that the best outcome is always possible. Mm. And if you find out that the best outcome isn't what you're going to get, well, then how do we make the best out of the outcome that we're getting? Mm. And that's, that's really where I keep all of my mental energy is always searching for the lessons and the goodness. Mm. Well, that's, that's great. I, you know, I tend to. Also, let... I smoke weed. I well, don't know if that matters, but uh, that, that helps. I, I, th- I think that helps. Um, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that now because weed is legal in Illinois. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. Yeah, Indi- Indiana's like a, 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 a weed lock state instead of a landlock state. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are. And uh, I, do- I don't enjoy doing shows in Indiana yeah. at this time, but... <laughs> Illinois, Michigan, I got you. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's uh, I, I mean, we just started selling uh, alcohol on Sundays last year, so it's going to take a while. Ooh, you guys are big time now. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 closer to Alabama than we are uh, the, than we are any of the states by us. I love Alabama. I have never had a bad show in Alabama. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, my son. They, my son lives in Huntsville. Are... My son lives in Huntsville, and I love going there. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. Huntsville is a really cool town. Yeah, if you ever had the chance to do comedy in Huntsville, I highly recommend it. I just got back. I went there over uh, Christmas break and uh, did two shows while I was down there, and they were all amazing. Yeah, and they rejuvenated me so much. Yeah, it seems like a really nice scene. I did do an open mic when I was down there visiting uh, one time, and just talk talk to a few of the comics there. the The bar that they had the open mic in uh, closed like mm-hmm. a month afterwards, but um, it was over by the um, oh that middle school where they have all the breweries. Um, it was in it was over in that area. Um, they've got uh, Yellow Hammer and uh, whatever the other ones are. Um, I've drank. I don't know. I don't- drink yeah i do so it's 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 okay, it, cool. it's good beer so 
Um, but I did, I did that open mic and then I started following the scene and it looks like they're really, I mean, there's really a lot of people, um, really working it there. So that's great. Yeah. My friend Jesse Pollard just opened, um, a new comedy club there. And so, um, I got to go down and do a show called, and it goes a little something like this. Uh-huh. And we did, um, it was sort of like a storyteller show. We had to write a bullshit story about a song that we uh, were, would then perform a few minutes later with a live band. Oh. And so I did uh, Zombie by the Cranberries. Oh, cool. And, um, yeah, and I wrote this really amazing, like, lesbian love story. And it was so much fun. And th- that show was remarkable. And I really hope Scott, uh, Scott you can keep doing it because it it was phenomenal. So if you're ever down there in Huntsville and you see there's that it goes a little something like this mm-hmm. is one of your options, go see it. Oh, it's I a definitely great will. Show. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. definitely will. Yeah, that and that city's just about to blow up anyway because um they're at the the arsenal. They've they've upped the FBI to where it's going to be the second largest FBI installation. They're putting a Toyota plan in. Um, they're just doing all kinds of stuff. They're getting a minor league baseball team, the Trash Pandas. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is a jerk. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no idea what he's barking at. He just randomly looked at me and started barking. Oh, so. he's, he's sick of you being yeah. on the phone. He's like, come on, Mom. You've been gone. and Now, now you're just going to talk on the phone? Yeah, he can suck it. He, he is a time suck for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll sit there and tell him how cute he is, and he just never stops. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he, he can wait. He's yeah. going to get plenty of attention later. So. Yeah. Um, but when you were, uh, be, before you came a co- comic, and um, and now, who, who are the comics that uh, really inspire you, and you just, uh, you, you think that they, are they embody what you want as a comic? H. John Benjamin and Maria Bamford. Okay. No, I don't know H. Um, John Benjamin, but I know Maria Bamford. Oh, he, H. John Benjamin does Bob's Burgers. Okay. The cartoon. Okay, yeah. And Archer and all of that. Um, I actually, uh, growing up, we talked about um, how Comedy Central was just happening right as I was in my formative years and um we had i had a friend of mine he had an apartment and he had cable and we would sneak into his apartment while he was at work and we would watch the animation block on comedy central mm-hmm. and one of the shows on there was dr cat professional therapist and that's actually how i started doing comedy i loved that show i own like the box sets like i've always been a huge dr cat H. John Benjamin fan, Jonathan Katz. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw on YouTube that Jonathan Katz had started a new uh, cartoon on YouTube called Explosion Bus. And so I immediately sent them a message. I'm like, hey, I'm loving this. You know, I'm a huge Dr. Katz fan. Excited to see John Katz is still doing stuff. And I wound up getting a spinoff of that show. Oh. And, um, yeah, and everybody that had a spinoff, there were these four of us, but like most of them were all stand up comics. Mm-hmm. And so my friend Ian Abramson, who is, um, he's now in LA and he's like a big fat deal. Uh, but anyway, he really encouraged me to, just, he's like, just go try stand up. I think you'd be really good at it. And bless him, he indulged all of my first sets, like, hey, this is what I did. Look at it. And he, his response was always, okay, you're growing, keep writing, keep uh-huh. writing, which is code for, oh my God, that was painful, please stop sending me these videos. <laughs> but because of his, because of Ian's um, encouragement, in the very beginning, I didn't give up. And I, because I started doing just straight stand up and it just wasn't for me. And, but once I started doing music, then he was like, oh, I think you're onto something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he was right. So, yeah. yeah. So, That's but anyway, but yeah. So, uh, Jonathan Katz, who was the voice of Dr. Katz, like, if I would not have been given that opportunity, I, I don't think I would be doing stand-up comedy and i can't imagine how tragic my life would feel without it <laughs> right like now that i've 
now that I've been doing it, you know, there is no other option for me. Like, this is it. This Mm. is, I am ready to put a ring on it. Like, this is all I'm doing. So... It really, yeah, it really is the best. Um, when when you can make people laugh, it's just the best. It's not. Uh, yeah. It, it, you you can't put a dollar sign on it, even though you want to get paid. Um, you just, it's just, yeah. a, just the best. And you said yeah. something. You said something in that that um, is very important. In that you approach somebody that you didn't really know, um, and mm-hmm. you followed through with it, and something happened for you because. A lot of folks oh, are, scared. Yeah. yeah. A lot of folks are scared to do that. They they, they think they're not yep. good enough. They they think that um, the, the the person's not going to like them. And and yep. and you and I coming from a sales background, um, it's just a no. And um, if if the, if exactly. they. If they say no, you go on to the next one. And and yeah. uh, I've got a couple people that you know I hang out with, and I've gotten on I've gotten on some shows that that they that they've uh, been interested on in being on, and they're like, well, how did you do it? And I said, well, I asked, and and mm-hmm. and it may have been months later, but they finally said yes. And so it's just it's yep. just one of those things you got to put yourself out there in order to have stuff attract to you. Yeah. You know, I when when it comes to comedy, I think a lot about the risk reward conundrum. Conundrum? Yeah. Conundrum? No. Conundrum. Yes, yeah. conundrum. Okay. So you you know, there's there's a certain amount of risk that's involved in order to achieve any sort of reward. And so when I am looking at an opportunity and going, you know, this is something that I think I would like to do and then I look at, okay, what is the risk involved? Is it going to cost me money? If so, then I need to be frugal about it and really give it more thought. But if the only thing that I'm going to lose is pride because they said no, then you bet I'm asking for it. And honestly, I've gotten a lot of opportunities I should probably not have gotten at that time uh, because I've asked. Mm -hmm. And I I wasn't ready for them, but I made it happen. And I am, you know, now I'm much better for it right. and so yeah so if the, if the risk the only thing that you're going to lose is pride at being told no then oh my gosh ask for it yeah why not you know the world is full of possibilities for people who ask mm-hmm. and Stuart Huff always says and I quote him a lot um, I, I'm a huge Stuart Huff fan like, yeah me too the biggest yeah um, but um he talks about, he said, you know, it's not always talent that makes somebody successful. It's how bad they want it. Mm. And I try and remember that. Like, I really do try hard. You know, like if I wasn't getting laughs at all, I wouldn't be getting booked. But I, I feel like my career is at the point where it is because I want it and I work for it. Mm. And I mean, it is. It is a forty-plus hour a week grind, and that's not including stage time. Yeah, like it is a lot. Yeah, but god damn, what a great job it is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah, that's one of the things that uh, Stuart mentioned in his interview. That uh, the thing he like well, one of the things he likes most about comedy is he hasn't had to punch a time clock for twenty some years. So that's uh-huh. that's good. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and one of the things that, um, I, it's something that I do and Stuart knows about it. He's seen my board. He, I have a huge vision, like vision goal board mm-hmm. at my house. It's like eight feet big. Wow. Um, and it's covered with, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's real intense because I am like Leslie Nope on Parks and Rec. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I, there's, I, on my daily to do list, one of the things that I do, and it is because of Stuart and I call it the Stuart Huff principle. Um, but I try every day to write an encouraging letter to a comedian somewhere and really try and like tell them again the things that I know I would like to read if somebody has sent me a letter. Mm-hmm. And, um, but just encouraging people because this business, it is a lot and yeah. it is hard and it doesn't always make sense and it gets very discouraging. And so, you know, we need those bright, happy moments where you just 
you feel like somebody is seeing you and that you have value. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and I know that's the way that anytime that I talk with Stuart, that's how he makes me feel. And yeah. so that's what I've just, I've aspired to do that. And so I've, I've written over 500 letters over the last three and a half years since mm-hmm. I started doing it um, to other comics, just encouraging them and hoping that they, like, that they feel like what they do matters. Mm-hmm. Because it does. In the grand scope of things, making this world laugh, bringing joy to people, making them forget where they're at in their own lives and just be free for a moment mm-hmm. is the most important job to have. Right. And I don't, I don't take it lightly. And so for people I see who are really, really hustling out there, like I want to encourage that and foster that and, you know, make them a part of this big team that we're all on. Right. Right. So, but yeah, but I mean, I, and there again, that's, that's because of Stuart. Mm-hmm. And so he says he's not punching a time clock, but he is out there working. Oh, he he's, is. Yeah, he is. He's, Working it. He's hustling like nobody's business. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, th- and I, 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 I don't want to pump your ego up too much, but um, you are very similar to Stuart in our conversation here and how engaged you are. And all the comics I've talked to so far have been extremely engaged, but you are, you and Stuart both are um, taking this seriously, even though this is a, brand new startup podcast you don't know me and uh Stuart Stuart didn't know me and I really appreciate that and you also you mentioned the podcast in a in a Facebook p- post and you don't know how much okay. that means to me because people respect you and people are going to listen just because you put it out there so you know things like that little things like that just make somebody's day yeah they do they truly they really really do yeah. and um i mean i'm i'm very happy that that's how it made you feel that makes me feel good and it makes it reminds me that i need to keep doing stuff like that but also i hope that other comics hear it and they understand how important it is that we have to support other comedians right because you know i i don't have the same fan base as Stuart has mm-hmm. i don't um and that's okay. But there may be people that sort of, it's like a Venn diagram, like where the circles interconnect, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, there are those people. And with every single comic, we all have those, those places where our fan bases interlock. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so yeah, my comedy may not be for everybody, but there are definitely people that it is for. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so we we all need to help each other by encouraging and lifting up and supporting and putting each other out there. So, yeah, right. it's and there are a lot of comics who do. Um, I wish that it was something that people were a little bit more, I, I guess, frequent about it. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of comics who do it mm-hmm. and they make a huge dent. But yeah. you know, I I just feel like. You know, sort of like um, ethical standards in this business, like that's a good one to have. Yeah. So always being supportive. Well, so. and, you know, 500 letters of encouragement. I mean, that's that, that's just nuts. And, and you know, bully to you for doing that. That's great. I, I just, uh, I, I can't imagine um, what a comic would feel like that, uh, you know, they're just coming up and they get a letter from you saying, hey, you're doing the right thing. Keep on doing it. That's just great. Yeah. Well, I I know for a fact that if I, like, when I'm having a bad day, like, now my life is a little bit difficult. And, um, but there have been days when I have said, hey, folks, uh, I genuinely, I just need a word of encouragement. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because a lot of the comics who have gotten my letters, they are so quick to respond right. and be like, hey, I saw that you needed this. I'm going to pay it back mm-hmm. right now. Um, so, I mean, truly, it's it's not something that I mean, I do it for them and for the greater good, but it but it benefits me too in the long run. And so, yeah, but it's all about building a really, really great work network. Mm-hmm. And 
yeah, you just, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. And it sucks a lot. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get out there and make those connections and keep those connections alive and thriving. And yeah, all of a sudden then you find yourself traveling all over the country in your Prius, you uh-huh. know, peeing in a cup in your car because you're so busy <laughs> and don't have time to waste to pull over. And uh, yeah, you, you, you start getting it done. Yeah. And, what your dreams are yeah and that's what i've had well that's definitely it's just definitely karmic it's a you know what you put out there is what you're going to get back and and uh you know i i was a pretty angry guy for a long time and i put out a lot of anger and that's what i got back and you know you 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 make a you look at yourself you know i was about to turn 50 and i looked at myself and i didn't like what i saw and i decided to change that and not a lot of people at that age will do that and because they say, well, let's just this is what I am. And, uh, you know, yeah. by doing that, I, you know, I I made my life better, you know, a hundredfold, uh, you know, my my relationships mm-hmm. with uh, family, uh, my wife, friends and all that kind of stuff just did did a complete 180. Everything was better. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, I think when we start focusing on the positivity then your life just starts reflecting that Mm -hmm. um, you know i i mean i know that there's like that that book the secret that's out there yeah but but there is really something to it and you know when when you are constantly searching for things that are wrong you're gonna find them but when you're constantly searching for things that are right all of a sudden you're finding those and life feels a heck of a lot more bearable. Yeah. And so that's, that's, when I, that's how I choose to live my life. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Um, so if you were to give a uh, brand new comic, two pieces of advice, what were the, what would you give them? Ooh, I just gave one of these last night at go bananas. Okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, this is something that I really wish that I had a day one. Um, I encourage new comics, to get a notebook and for every single show that they do from the very beginning, um, get a copy of the set list, like just take a picture of it. Mm-hmm. And then when you get home, write down the name of every comic that you worked with on that show, the venue, and then write down one joke that they told that really, like you thought was really funny. Because later on, and we do that for every single show, because later on, when you are asking for time or asking to be on somebody's show, you can then say, hey, I worked with you on, you know, last May at this place. You told that joke about that, that, that. It's so funny. I'd really like to come and perform at your place. That's great. That's great advice. Yep. Um, I don't do it, but mm-hmm. it's great advice, isn't mm-hmm. it? <laughs> No, I'm a little too far in the game to start that shit now. Yeah. But I wish I had. I wish I had. Yeah. Well, it makes makes total so, sense. Yeah. So the other thing I think that I would probably... Uh, okay. This, this one is a point of contention. And this is something that I love my fellow work buddies. And I, I do. Um, if you, as a new comic, if you have a question about comedy that you would like to be answered seriously, then don't put it in a comedy group on Facebook as a public post. Uh-huh. Send someone a personal message. Send five people a personal message. Because if you put it on, like, uh, the comedian group for, like, Indianapolis or whatever, you know, like, we're all smart asses, mm-hmm. and we don't, we're not always nice a new comic, right. especially when they ask questions that we've read a million times. Mm. I'm just as guilty of that. I'm not always the most patient person and <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this old chestnut. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so if you want actual like quality advice, then find five comics, send them all, like copy and paste same message, mm. and see what each of them say. Don't put it in that because I, <laughs> sometimes I feel like probably as comedians, we probably scare new people out of ever doing comedy again because we're all so shitty mm-hmm. on some of those group messages. We're funny, <laughs> but we're not nice. Yeah. And so 
So, and I think that, you know, because if somebody asks me personally what I think about a particular topic, then I will give them a very honest and heartfelt answer. If I see that everybody's cracking jokes, then I want to get in there because I don't know how to punch out and I want to make a joke. And so then I'm not answering the question. I'm just working. I'm just running this. And you're not going to get any advice that's usable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I, I think that that, that is probably, that would probably be my other bit of advice. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's you actually, that, that is two, that is two things I never would have expected to hear. And I think both of them are great. Oh, I, well, I don't do things like other people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of weird like that. I've got I've got a few people in my circle and I I do exactly what you what you said uh, you know I will bounce things off of them I'll you know this is mm -hmm. th this is something I'm working on do you think it's worth it and and mm -hmm. really when 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 you're friends with somebody they can be really honest and say no um first of all they can mm -hmm. say they've heard it before um because parallel mm -hmm. thinking and all that kind of stuff they've heard a version of it before right. and that's helpful because you can just kick it out um, but they can tell you, Hey, you've got something there. And, you know, I've got a couple people that will tell me, they'll say, Hey, that's really coming along. That's working. Um, you, you've got a ways to go, but keep, keep working on it. And, and those same people will say, Hey, that joke's played itself out. It's, it's not going to work. Go away. Right. You know, get, yeah. get rid of it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I think for me, um, yeah, and there are some jokes that need to be gotten rid of. Like, not, not yours. I haven't heard your set necessarily. Yeah. Um, not, but, I mean, but you know what I mean? Like, everybody's got those clunkers in there that you're like, just let it go. Yeah. And, but um, for me, I think, and too, because I do musical comedy, I don't necessarily feel confident on giving straight stand up people advice like from a, an on-stage perspective mm -hmm. because what works for me is completely different than what works for everybody else because I, I'm not, I, I have a whole different feel, a whole different style. Like I'm, I'm different and I'm okay with that. So yeah, so my advice is off-stage mm -hmm. because that's something that you've got to start doing right away and the faster that you start doing that, the quicker that you're going to find success. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize that until, you know, a little bit later in the game. So it's, yeah, I'm not going to pretend that I know how to tell somebody to, I mean, you know, you can throw them a tagline or something, but like, I don't want to tell stand up, like straight stand up people how to do their set right. because my advice may not work for them because their advice sure as fuck doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not going to pretend like that's not a two way street. So, but the marketing shit, that, that, that I can I can talk about all day long. Yeah, so, and you're you're yeah. definitely a pro at that. Uh, you know, compared c compared to all the other comics, you are regular and you you put out the stuff that shines a light on what you want it to shine on, and it definitely works. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye on you for my stuff uh, because I know what I should do uh, for the podcast, <laughs> and I know what I actually do, and they're two very different things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on, and I'll, when we get off of this particular, uh, call, I'll actually send you a picture of my, uh, my big board and kind of show you the level that, that I have, to, what I have to do in order to maintain all of this. And it's, it's a lot. That's but it's so worth it. Yeah. And I encourage you to, you know, really bust your hump and do it because, mm. man, I'm excited for you and for this show because I think that it, there's a lot of value in it. And right. I think that a lot of new comedians, like it's a great, it's a great resource for mm -hmm. them. And so kudos to you for putting it out. Right. Well, thank th Thank you. That's, and that's exactly what I want to do. And uh, honestly, I want to make it a little bit bigger than just a podcast. I, I kind of want to create a community of people who come together and help each other out Um Talk uh -huh. t talk about the uh, talk about the venues that don't pay. Talk about uh, 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 places to go. Get yourself gigs. Um, run bits past each other. You know, I, I've got I've got dreams. I should do a vision board of my own because you know I'm talking about like having a private group where um, we can all drop in and chat and uh, uh, actually actually have a resource for people 
who want to get into comedy, people who have been in comedy for a year, three years, five years, whatever, and um, actually get this community together so that, you know, they they can all feed off of each other and do something, do something for themselves. And uh, I get to sit right. back and watch it happen. So that's that that's my goal. Yeah, well, I think that's a wonderful goal, and I will highly suggest um, dry erase contact paper is great for vision boards. Uh -huh, okay, you can make it as big as you want it, and you can stick it wherever. Uh -huh. So, yep, that's my third piece of unsolicited advice. Cool, on it. cool. Get dry erase contact paper <laughs> and uh, start keep a list and really, really keep track of things because it's it's going to benefit you in the end. Right. So, yeah. Well, I'm excited to watch you now. So yeah. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I don't think of myself as a as a great comic, but I've had moments. I, I, I know that. So <laughs> that's you know that's that's all I'm looking for is the moments right now, and may, maybe a, a good fifteen yep. minutes. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, if you have enough of the small moments, then they they all start adding up, and then before you know it, you've got your fifteen. Yeah. So. Yeah, keep pushing. Keep yeah. pushing. Great. Well, Charlie, yeah. thanks so know, much. Be, I'm sorry. Uh, oh no, I was just going to say, uh, just so that you know, I'll be up at the drop again, Valentine's Day weekend. I'm oh, great, up there. great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, so my buddy Bridget Denman is going to come up and uh, feature for me, and she's hilarious. Cool. So. Well, I most likely uh, will see you on Saturday then, because I'm doing a little show on Goshen on Friday. But yeah, I'm, I'll try to stop in. I'll try to stop in on Saturday of that weekend. Yeah, that would be awesome. So Great. I'd love to shake your hand, yeah. hug your neck, and yeah. talk to you. It'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> see the old guy that's starting all this crap. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! All right. Well, so, thanks. Well, thanks thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and thanks for being being on the show. I know that one one thing that's very important to comics is their time, and you just spent a little over an hour with me, and I want you to know I really appreciate it. It uh, means a lot to me that you would uh, take that amount of time, especially just after coming off uh, home off of a gig, to uh, talk to me about uh, comedy and 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 what works for you. And it, I, I think there's some good nuggets here for everybody. I, I hope so. And again, thank you for having me and for, you know, giving me the opportunity to sort of put what I do into words. And um, yeah, it, it just kind of helps normalize what we do for a living. Right. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's nice. It, it's nice to feel this. So thank you. You, you helped me. So. Well, great. All right. Well, well we hope that you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Yeah, you too. The Jeep Wrangler 4xE. It's electrified, boogie, boogie, boogie. so you can boogie woogie woogie up a mountain, boogie. over creeks, or boogie woogie woogie through a desert, where you get bit by a pit viper. Uh. So you boogie woogie woogie back to camp and ask your friends if they'll suck the snake venom out. When they say no, you boogie woogie woogie to the nearest hospital for a dose of antivenom, and boogie woogie woogie your way to a full recovery. Yeah. The electrified Jeep Wrangler 4xE. Learn more at Jeep.com. Jeep is a registered trademark of FCA US LLC.